Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, one of the great lessons learned in sports is not just the thrill of victory, but the sting of defeat. Most every sport is a zero-sum game. For every winner, there is a loser. And how we handle failure, that may well be the most valuable life lesson we learn on the playing field. Today, we're going to begin our show at the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame and hear from some of the greatest Oklahomans to ever play their chosen game. I mean, guys like Mickey Mantle and Terry and Bud Wilkinson and all those guys, they were just my heroes. We'll look back at the life of the Oklahoman often referred to as the world's great greatest athlete. But he also played Major League Baseball. He won a, the National Ballroom Dancing Championship, and he was the first commissioner of the NFL. When it comes to college football, National Signing Day has become an event unto itself. But today, we'll take you to a signing day where most everyone goes pro. Look, this is the way you move out of mom and dad's house. This is how you get going on your with your life, and these certifications can set you up for life. And then we'll meet some coaches in life. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by CareerTech, a job for every Oklahoman and a workforce for every company. With additional support from the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. I'm Rob McClendon. Well, Oklahoma is home to some sports superstars. Baseball legends Mickey Mantle and Johnny Bench, Olympic medalists Shannon Miller and John Smith, and football greats Troy Aikman and Steve Largent, all honored at the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. It's a one-of-a-kind museum that highlights some of the state's greatest athletes with a special emphasis on Oklahoma's greatest athlete of them all, Jim Thorpe. When you think of Oklahoma's best athletes, any number of names can come to mind. But when you think of the state's greatest athlete, there is only one. Well, Jim Thorpe is a, is a legend, uh, not only in, the, in Oklahoma or, or in the country, uh, worldwide he is. And he just, you know, he was designated as the world's greatest athlete in, in the 1912 Olympics. And his history is just the one of, of achievement, hard work. And, and more achievement. Born in 1888 near Prague, Oklahoma of Sack and Fox descent, Thorpe went to the Indian school near Stroud before becoming a two-time All-American at the Carlisle Indian Industrial School in Pennsylvania, where they beat perennial powerhouse Army and the future President Dwight D. Eisenhower. But it was at the 1912 Olympics in Stockholm, Sweden, where he won two gold medals where Thorpe was first referred to as the world's greatest athlete. You know, a lot of people don't realize that besides uh, football, he was one of, a great football player, a great defensive back. He was also a great running back and those kind of things too. But he also played Major League Baseball. He won a, the National Ballroom Dancing Championship. And he was the first commissioner of the NFL. In fact, it is a larger than life statue of Thorpe that sits in the rotunda of the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Still considered one of the most versatile athletes of modern sports, each year the best college defensive back in the nation is awarded the Jim Thorpe Award. I found, we're one of the founders of the National College Football Awards Association. That's the Heisman, Jim Thorpe Award, uh, Davey O'Brien, the Maxwell Awards, all, all of those. So uh, we've been involved with that for, since 1986. Uh, they'll see the, the PACOM Jim Thorpe Award as they walk in the, in the door here. They'll see all the great athletes that's been, been selected as, the, as a Jim Thorpe winner around the walls. Thorpe continued to play professional sports well into his 40s, but hit hard times after his athletic career ended. Like but here really at the Jim Thorpe Museum and Sports Hall of Fame, it is his athletic achievements that are enshrined. One of the favorite things that we have here that for me is in 1912, they, they gave... Uh, not only the gold medals, but they gave wrote parchments that, that told everything. We've got them framed over here. We still have those original ones uh, on the wall here, so. 
for people to see and look at. Well, the museum also has replicas of Thorpe's Olympic gold medals in the pentathlon and the decathlon, which were not easy to come by. Thorpe was stripped of both medals when it was found he had violated the strict Olympic amateurism rules of that day. But 30 years after his death, it was Oklahoma Governor George Nye who convinced the International Olympic Committee to restore Thorpe's Olympic gold. Now, when we return, we'll hear from more of Oklahoma's sports greats and take a look around the Sports Hall of Fame. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon with Rob McClendon. Weekly insight into your changing world. Well, the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame is a one-of-a-kind facility that honors hundreds of great Oklahomans. The museum highlights some of Oklahoma's greatest athletes and some of its greatest sports history. Eddie Griffin is the president of the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. So we just have a, have a ton of people from Oklahoma that uh, the culture of Oklahoma, and I, I always say this when we go to the College Football Awards Association, they came in the other day when we met and they said, what are you guys doing in Oklahoma? And I just told them it's the culture in Oklahoma, it's just hard work and, and uh, doing the right thing at the right time and making sure you're, you're there when you're supposed to be. So it's, uh, and I think, I think relating that back to kids that come through the museum here, that's what we try to tell them, you can get there from here. Wherever you want to go, you can get there from being from Oklahoma, whether it's as sports and athletics or arts or, or whatever you're going to try to do in your life, you can get there. The crack of a bat, the smell of the turf, fresh chalk lines under the Friday night lights, the hush of the crowd as two competitors face off on the mat, the whistle blows, the crowd cheers. So many memories wash over us as we think about sports and the place in our hearts where our sports heroes live. Allie Reynolds, I thought, was such a great pitcher, and I always wanted his number, 22. Well, my dad, his dream was to play in the major leagues as a catcher. I was named after Mickey Mantle. You see a guy named Mickey Mantle from Oklahoma playing on the New York Yankees, and you say, that guy's a teenager and playing with the Yankees. You know, that's, uh, that's impressive. And Oklahoma has more than its share of superstar athletes, men and women who have stepped up from the red dirt playing fields of Oklahoma to become champions on the world stage. I mean, guys like Mickey Mantle and Terry and Bud Wilkinson and all those guys, they were just my heroes from the time I was in junior high. One of my earliest memories of uh, somebody I really looked up to, probably Wayne Wells, you know, won the 1972 Olympics. I didn't have to look too far. My, my idols were my brothers, Leroy and John Smith. You had uh, Campanella and the Dodgers, and you had the Yankees and Yogi Berra and Mickey Mantle, and I couldn't wait to watch them every day. I mean, I think we all want to not only celebrate these heroes, but I think in a lot of ways, it's a validation that hard work and sacrifice mean something. And in fact, the best asset that the Hall of Fame has are these stories. This is where many of the stories come alive. The Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame is home to the stories of Oklahoma sports greats, a collection of Oklahoma-made inspiration. Played on uh, seven pennant winners with the Yankees. And got to play with uh, some great players, uh, Mickey Mantle, Yogi Berra, uh, Whitey Ford, you know, several Hall of Famers. Didn't happen right away. And uh, it like took a big load off of my shoulders. I finally did what he had been saying I could do. And the fans kind of, you know, the New York fans are great, but uh, they can be pretty mean. And I was only 19 years old and, uh, you know, I was, I even called my dad and told him, I said, I don't think I can play ball, you know? One visit to the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame will not only inspire, but the number and caliber of this state's athletes may also surprise you. We have 175 distinguished members of the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. I grew up in Oklahoma, and most of the people in here, the closest I ever thought I'd get to any of these was having their baseball card in my box boat. Of this state to produce the number of athletes this state has in uh, all sports is unbelievable. The talent that has come from this state, it's exceptional. Those guys in that hall, 
push that talent to the limit. The Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame is one of the top five sports uh, museums in the country. You know, everything from the world's greatest athlete, Jim Thorpe, to people like Mickey Mantle and Ralph Terry and baseball and Johnny Bench. And then gymnastics with Shannon Miller. And it's on and on and on. And not only do we have great athletes, Barry Sanders in football, Troy Aikman in football, we've just got such a rich tradition in the sport in Oklahoma. And until you come in uh, the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame, you don't realize how darn many uh, people have excelled in all kinds of sports. Well, I think that, you know, interestingly enough, only one time in the history of mankind have two college running backs overlapped in their careers and both ended up in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton. That's Barry Sanders and Thurman Thomas. They're both in this Hall of Fame and I had the privilege of coaching them. The people that are here are just unbelievably great, great athletes and great people as well. So for me to be included in that group, I love it. Well, through its Bright Path Youth Program, the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame sponsors the state's largest drug-free initiative, as well as Oklahoma City's Children's Challenge that involves more than 4,000 Metro students. Now, the Jim Thorpe Museum and Oklahoma City Sports Hall of Fame are open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 5, and admission is free. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, making it work in the classroom. But first, signing day. Well, many boys and girls grow up dreaming of playing sports in college and beyond, but few do. Of the nearly 8 million students currently participating in high school athletics in the United States, only 480,000 will ever compete at the NCAA level. And of that group, only a fraction will realize their goal of becoming a professional or an Olympic athlete. Take for instance football. Right over a million young men played high school football last year, but only about 73,000 will ever play in college. And when you do the math, that figures out to be just 6.8%. And of those college football players, only 1.5% will ever make it to the pros. Yet when it comes to college signing day, we now celebrate it almost as much as we do the game, which is why some Oklahoma Tech centers have put their own twist on going pro. This may look like a fresh batch of young athletes signing on their intent to play for a top college team, but here at CV Tech in El Reno, this signing day is a little bit different. We do signing day this way because we want to focus on the student. Gayla Lutz is the deputy superintendent of CV Tech. We want them to know what an honor it is to be a part of Career Tech. We want them to know what an honor it is to, to be chosen. It may not be a traditional athletic signing day, but there are many similarities. Much like the high bar college athletes have to go through, not every student that applied made it into these CV Tech programs. And these teens are making a decision that will impact where they go in life. David Venard is an automotive collision technology instructor. This is a first adult decision they get to make. I mean, they're taking the initiative to take that first step of their life, and it's just the sky's the limit. But David says that's where the similarities end. Unlike athletics, where only a tiny percentage of college athletes make it to the pros, these teens could easily set themselves up for a lifelong career. Whenever they come talk to me in sophomore tours, I sell the program to them like, look, this is the way you move out of mom and dad's house. This is how you get going on your, with your life, and these certifications can set you up for life. And the moms and dads of these teens are obviously thrilled by this concept. Marka and Scott Dyer's son Tanner plays football for UConn High, but has signed up today to enter the electrician program. We're just happy that he picked something that can benefit him in the future once he graduates. Just to give him an opportunity before he even gets out of school, he's already got a trade. He already knows what he's going to do. It's just something I've been wanting to do because my dad was doing it for a little bit, so it's just... That's just what I kind of want to do. I'm super excited for Cooper. Krista Klontz is another newly minted, proud career tech parent. He really tried really hard to get into the welding program, 
and was excited about his interview. It's his family as welders, my husband and his dad and uncles, so he's very excited to continue on with the tradition. And the signees themselves have a variety of reasons for taking up these courses. Addison Ryburn wants to take his passion to the professional level. I came here when I school came here and I saw that we were building computers and I was really interested. I've built my own computer before and I was like, oh, that'd be cool to get certifications to do this so I can do it as a job. And his father, Adam Ryburn, professor at Oklahoma City University, agrees. That's how you get jobs. Um, in order to make money, to be a, a productive member of society, you got to have that piece of paper saying that you've done something. They're leaving here at the age of 18 with that credential. They don't have to wait until they get to college and get a college degree to get that credential. And that credential is also going to help them get through college as well. I started here in 1976. Don DeWald is a longtime computer information technology instructor and former career tech student. I did a year of college and it just, I wasn't ready at that time. And, uh, and so a friend of mine told me about Moore Norman Tech. I took their electronics program. In eight months, I started my first job. Within three years, I was working for IBM. I've spent over 40 years working with computers based on that eight-month program I got in electronics at Moore Norman Tech. While the programs have, of course, evolved with technology over time, Don says what hasn't changed is these students signing today can expect some real career results. And that's thanks in part to their industry partners. A Dell representative spent probably 30 hours in our class this year. They showed them, here's what we want in a resume, this is what we're looking for. They showed them, uh, here's uh, interview questions. Dell is more than happy to help, since these budding computer engineers are just what they need in job applicants. Dell will give them $3,000 a year tuition reimbursement. They've certainly got money to pay for their college. And so whether they, they feel forced to do it in four years or if they take five, six, or seven years, at the end they've got no college debt. Uh, they've got a great career. One, two, three. And Adam Ryburn says that's what makes this signing day all the more remarkable. To have that in a different situation and, and see the excitement on the students who are going to be going to a place to learn a trade that they're going to make money at immediately out of school um, is just really cool. Horizon is at your fingertips. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to catch the segments you may have missed and our latest new content as it happens. Well, some of the best coaches are not always on the playing field, but in the classroom. In our continuing look at Making It Work Day at the State Capitol, we meet Robbie Adams, a carpentry and construction instructor at Southern Tech. In Robbie Adams' carpentry and construction class at Southern Tech in Ardmore, the excitement is always building. I want to make sure they're ready to go to work as soon as they leave the program. And so we focus on the house. The house is our project and it encompasses just all the aspects of the building process. This class project provides strong, real-world experience for these aspiring builders. In fact, Robbie says that's what puts it far beyond a mere class project. And I tell the students from day one, we're building someone a home. And so we want to make sure we do the very best work we can, take pride in the work we do, and eventually you'll get to drive down the road and show your kids and grandkids the house that you built when you were at Southern Tech. Another thing you may notice about Mr. Adams' class is that it's diverse, with a lot of students you wouldn't traditionally see taking up this trade. About 20% of my class this year is female students. All my students are a little bit different. They're all different, none of them are the same, they're all unique. And Adams says it's a challenge to find out not just how to build up this home, but how to build up these students as well. My philosophy is every student that walks through that door is here to learn how to build a house. And it's my job, whatever baggage they bring with them, it's my job to sift through there, get them the training they need, be their friend, be their mentor, whatever I have to do to break down them walls so we can get them out here in the shop. Robbie has three main things he focuses on to get the most out of his students. He strives for a supportive work environment, listens to his students, and cheers them on. They want to a place they can learn free from threat. 
So I make sure that my classroom, my environment, my shop area, my house areas, everybody works together. There's no poking, teasing, no sarcasm. The second thing is, is every student has a story to tell you. And you just need to take the time to listen. And I listen to them and I, and I visit with them and I try to get to know them when the little period of time I get with them. And then the, uh, the last thing is I'm their cheerleader. I want to motivate them. A lot of times I'll have students that will do really good work, but they just don't think they're quite ready or good enough to go out in the workforce. I want to make sure when they leave my program, they are, they are confident in what they can do and their skills, that they're ready to go to work and get a job in the construction industry. And even in this short time, Mr. Adams has taken them to places some of these students never thought they'd ever be. This is something that I never thought possible, honestly. Claudia Corona is what many would consider a non-traditional student. But despite this, she's found ways to rise to the challenge. It's a quick, it's a fast-paced class. Um, but definitely, uh, once we finish the first house, we feel more confident that we could do anything. And now we're actually building the second house that will be completed, you know, at the end of the next school year. And that confidence has led her to believe that which may make her different than many of her peers makes her stronger. Being Hispanic, uh, being bilingual, any type of career, um, it's a great opportunity to us because there is, there is so much need for bilingual and non-traditional students. Uh, besides, I'm a female, so obviously the this type of career was something that probably people wouldn't think that is possible for us. I've seen it more than challenging, I think I've seen it more of exciting. Claudia says the main challenge she faced was that at age 42, her high school days are far behind her. She even has a son that's the same age as many of her classmates. However, she had plenty of help to get past those differences. They actually helped me, my son helped me, the teacher helped me a lot, you know, with understanding and, and put more to practice all of that. In Mr. Adams' eyes, all of his students are non-traditional in their own way, and it's his job to foster the passion in each of them. Claudia is, is a unique individual. I really think she's a lot like me. She's a lifelong learner, and, and she really enjoys what she does. She loves working with wood. She loves building cabinets. So I think if you have a passion for what you're doing or wanting to learn, I think there's less of an obstacle to overcome. And by the end of next year, she's going to be ready to go to work. Absolutely. What Claudia and the other students we talk to agree upon, it's that you shouldn't let what makes you different keep you from what you want to do. Anybody can do it. If I can do it at 42 years of age, anybody can do it. So I wish everybody will really think that it's possible that they can definitely apply and get the help and assistance to be able to succeed on whatever they like. You take a bunch of high school kids that's never picked up a hammer, and they built that house that's sitting outside. It's just, to me, that's just amazing. I just start preaching from day one. We want to be accurate, we want it to want to look good, and we want to make sure the craftsmanship shows in your work. Let's pretend you're not a bunch of high school kids that's never picked up a hammer or used a saw. And let's pretend that we're seasoned carpenters as we're building this house. And it actually kind of, it works. Well, finally today, while coaches can be found in all places, they can also come in all ages. Our congratulations go out today to Broken Arrow High School's Jada Holiday for being named a U.S. Presidential Scholar. We all have our epiphany moments, our aha realizations, and these are the situations that shape the rest of our futures. I had mine not only a week ago, Watching students I tutored and mentored since the fourth grade walk across a graduation stage they told me they'd never stepped foot on. And it made me realize that the leadership and the tenacity that radiates from these kids has helped me to truly see my potential as not only a leader, but as a world changer. Individuals, much like these extraordinary students of mine, are my inspiration. They have helped me to realize my passion for providing for those in need. Seeing the way people's faces light up when they succeed, even down to believing in a hope again, is a feeling beyond any other I could ever imagine. And after I experienced the opportunity of serving others, I realized that it's something that I want to do for the rest of my life. Holiday is the Regional Vice President for HOSA, the Career Tech Student Organization associated with Health Careers. Want to see more stories like this? All our segments are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV.
Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, we'll go inside an Oklahoma Cold War relic and see how it's still helping with public safety. We've seen kids out here that come out that have a sour look on law enforcement and they get to come out and spend the day with us and, and see that, you know, we're, we're dads, we're moms, we're brothers and sisters. You know, I think when they walk away from here, I think that they have a different outlook. And we'll take a look at a company where there's very little sight. On Oklahoma Show for the Heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Thanks for including us as part of your day. I'm Rob McClendon. Hope to see you back here next week. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. With additional support from the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry.